Good afternoon, everyone. This is uh, Ms. Lily Chishi from the Department of Economics. I warmly welcome each and every one of you to the webinar session on emotional intelligence organized by the Department of Economics, Tetsuo College. Today, we have a very interesting topic uh, that is on emotional intelligence. And I'm sure all of you have read the abstract and the bio of our guest faculty today. So she will be speaking on emotional intelligence. So emotional intelligence is the capacity to understand and manage the emotions. The skills involve emotions, intelligence of self-awareness, self-regulation, motivation, empathy, and social skills. Today, we are living in a, full, in a world full of uncertainty and disheartening news. We can see this, we can hear this heartening news, everyone. And most of us are affected by this pandemic in one way or other. So we cannot control the difficult situation. We cannot control the pandemic and all that it brings. brings. But we are faced with uh, stressful and difficult situations. And it can emerge in different many forms in our daily life. But the need, so the need for the development in emotional intelligence is that one can cope with any situation in life and live a happy and successful life and one does well in a personal as well as a professional life. And also, uh, even in the student's life, students with higher level of emotional intelligence are able to manage themselves and to relate with others around themselves and helps to develop and improve self-motivation and effective communications skills essential to help students become a confident learner. So uh, this is the reason why we have uh, chosen on the topic emotional intelligence to help the students in this uh, difficult situation when one is faced with pandemic and, and when they are facing a lot of uncertainty in their lives. We hope that through this session, uh, the students will learn how to regulate their emotional being how to regulate themselves and live a good and balanced life. So uh, today, uh, I'm very happy to welcome welcome our speaker. Speaker, uh, uh, she is uh, Ms. Martine Nguyen-Panmai, counseling psychologist. So uh, she, yes, she is specialized in uh, educational psychology from Martin Luther oh. University. Okay. Yes, you can please unmute your microphone, uh, the participants. So uh, currently, she is based in Darjeeling. She is a, a school counselor, teach, teach, teaches psychology, and also gives a life skill programs at Botil Memorial School Coursium. She holds double master degrees in uh, philosophy from Nehu and MSc in counseling uh, psychology. She is also a research scholar focusing her area of study in attitude of uh, students among uh, tribal students toward mathematics and academic performance. And I'm very happy and glad to welcome her to our webinar station. And also thank you to the speaker for accepting our request to come and speak to our students in spite of your busy schedule. And also uh, she, I'm so happy because uh, she is uh, my roommate and my close friend. So I hope we will have a very engaging and insightful session. Okay, so uh, we will be. I will be giving her the time, but after her talk, we will have a Q and A session. That is, uh, you can post your question. You can unmute your mic and uh, give your ask questions, or also you can put it in the chat box at the end of the session. And yeah, participants, you are kindly requested to unmute your to unmute your mute your microphone. Okay. And also, you can uh, turn on your captions uh, if you are not able to hear the voice uh, clearly. So, without further ado, I give the rest of the time to Matinimle and Miss. You can have your time. Okay. Thank you, Ali. Am I audible? Yes, it's audible. Okay. Thank you for audible. the introduction. Okay. 
So I'm not going to show the video, but I'll directly start with the presentation, okay? Yes. Is it uh, okay to allow me to do the presentation? Uh, somebody is still presenting. Oh, I think somebody needs to, yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, Ali, is the screen visible? Yes, it's uh, visible. Okay. Um, so thank you for having me uh, in your session. Okay, so uh, today we will learn about the basic understanding of what emotional intelligence is. So this is a modern day concept and a lot of psychologists would like to give credit to emotional intelligence for a person's success rather than the IQ, the intelligent question that a person has, okay? So uh, in order to understand the term emotional intelligence, I would like to break this term into two words, emotion and intelligence, okay? So if I ask you what emotion is, then a majority of you might say it is a feeling. So it is correct, okay? But when we talk about emotion, it is not just a feeling, but it also involves reaction. So whenever you feel something, you react. Whenever you're angry, happy, or sad, you react, right? So when we talk about emotion, it no, it's not just feeling, but it, it is also a reaction. And it is also important to know that it has no gender. Sometimes we uh, attribute uh, some of the emotions as uh, boyish and some are girlish, okay? But it is very important to know that emotion has got uh, a biological determinants, which means your biology made up your emotions, okay? That's the reason why it is not wise to uh, label emotions as uh, masculine and feminine, okay? So let's go to intelligence. Intelligence is um, the ability of a person to learn or to apply the knowledge uh, or skills. So if you're able to learn something or able to learn new things and if you're able to apply the knowledge that you have learned, so you are an intelligent person, okay? So what is emotional intelligence then? It is the combination of emotions and intelligence. So overall, it is the person's ability to learn and apply emotions. So what do you mean by learning and applying emotions? So let's try to cover the area of what is meant by learning and applying emotions. So there are four areas that you need to understand, okay? So the first one is uh, learning how to manage your emotions. We all have the positive and the negative emotions. And uh, we understand that whatever emotions that we feel, we have the tendency uh, to um, have an effect on the other person as well, okay? So learning how to navigate and uh, regulate, especially the negative emotions such as anger, hatred, okay? Those are the examples. Learning how to navigate your um, anger or your hatred uh, in a more healthy way is meant by managing your emotions okay the second one is understanding emotions a lot of times we're confused what we are exactly feeling okay sometimes people might say when they're feeling bored they might confuse that as, as sadness Okay, but be able to term the emotion correctly and understand what exactly you're feeling at the moment and at a particular situation is very, very important. That is meant by understanding emotions. Okay, and the next one is learning how to use your emotions. It means that you know how to use your emotions appropriately and also learn how to express your emotion depending on the situations that you are in. 
For example, if you're going to a funeral and if you're having a good time and if you're laughing out loud out there, it is a very inappropriate emotions that you are showing. Okay, but emotional intelligence is learning how to use your emotions and express yourself uh, in an appropriate manner. So the last one is perceiving emotion. It means uh, you use your senses. We have five sense organs, right? So using your senses to understand the emotions of other people. So when you look at your teacher, sometimes they're not in a good mood. So they didn't have to tell you that they're not in the good mood. You just look at them and then you perceive the emotion and you know that they're not in a good mood. That is perceiving emotions, okay? So emotional intelligence encompasses all these four areas, okay? So let's try to understand uh, what is meant by emotionally intelligent person. So according to two uh, social psychologists, uh, Peter Selvey and John Mayer, they feel that to be an emotionally intelligent person, uh, one need to acquire five skills. Okay, so we will be talking about the five skills that an emotionally intelligent person should have. So the first one is self-awareness. So when we talk about self-awareness, what does it mean? It means that you are conscious of yourself. To be conscious of yourself, it means that you know your inside and outside of yourself. You know your strength and your weaknesses. You know the bad side, the good side of you. You also understand that you have the ugly side and the beautiful side of you. And it is also uh, meant that you understand your physical needs. You understand your emotional needs as well as your uh, mental state. Okay, so that is being self-aware. And the second one is empathy. Empathy is uh, being able to walk in the shoe of someone else, which means that you're able to feel the same thing as the other person is feeling, okay? So remember, empathy is different from sympathy because sympathy, when you sympathize with somebody, you are feeling pity for that person and you felt sorry for that person, and then, but in your heart, you're glad that you are the person who is going through that situation, okay? But to sympathize with somebody means you are really feeling the sadness of that person or the happiness of that person and you are walking in the shoe of that person. So that is being um, empathizing, okay? And the next one is self-regulation. So being able to be in control of yourself, especially with your impulses such as your anger, aggression, okay? or uh, you being in control of yourself and you're able to regulate uh, whatever negative feeling that you have into a more healthy one and you're able to express yourself. That is uh, being able to self-regulate. Okay? And the next one is motivation. Motivation is being aware of what motivates you and also being aware of what motivates other people. Remember, when we talk about emotional intelligence, it's not just about you knowing yourself, but it is also about you knowing other people as well. That's why you have to know what motivates you as well as other people. And the last skills that you need to have is the social skill. So these are the skills that you need to develop in order to have a good relationship with other people. Okay, so what are some of the skills that you need? Some of the skills like uh, learning how to communicate effectively with other people or uh, learning uh, to be assertive or maybe uh, learning how to be a team player. So these are some of the skills that you need in order to have a good emotional intelligence. Okay, so let's talk about EQ and IQ. As I've mentioned before, many of the psychologists would like to give credit to EQ for a person's success in life, may it be in personal uh, success or may it be a professional success, okay? Um, maybe in the olden times, maybe around 50 years ago, many of the people would um, 
say that IQ is responsible for a person's success. Maybe because uh, they would view success as uh, a person who's earning a lot of money or having a good social status in the society, okay? But in the present time, EQ is very important because people have begun to understand the importance of overall well-being. So in order to have overall well-being, having the capacity to think and perform will not uh, give you an overall well-being. But you need to have uh, emotional intelligence as well. Okay, so let us go further and see why emotional intelligence is so important. Let's say you are uh, applying for a job. Okay, so when you apply for a job, um, you have passed out from your university with 99.9%. Okay, and there are also other people out there, let's say 10 people are also out there who have the same degree with the same marks, and you also have conducted the IQ test, and you all have scored 130 above in the IQ test. Okay, so out of all these people, what makes the employer choose that one person who is uh, fit for the job? So they look into the EQ of a person, okay? Which means that they need somebody who knows how to um, have a good relationship with other people. They also need somebody who knows how to work and make good decisions under tough times or when they are being pressured, okay? So you need emotional intelligence. Uh, if you're supposed to work in a reputed organization or uh, any uh, business firm, okay? And the next one is, it also increases leadership ability. Emotional intelligence increases leadership ability. So in the present time, uh, a leader is not just a person who gives command and demands from the worker to do the work and he wants other people to listen to him. It's not the case anymore, okay? Because uh, in the present time, it is all about everyone contributing to the success of uh, wherever they are working. So if the person has, if the boss or if the leader in the agency has a good emotional intelligence, then he will be able to uh, understand the different needs of his workers, okay? And then whenever there is a conflict because of the differences in idea, a good leader will be able to resolve the conflict, uh, understanding uh, the background and ideas that they have and then he'll be able to come to a good decision making. And at the same time, he'll be able to uh, empathize with his workers. So to have emotional intelligence is very important um, if a person has to be leader someday, okay? And the next one is having a good emotional intelligence will improve in decision making. As we all know, Emotions do not have right or wrong, okay? It doesn't have any rational thinking. So um, a person who has a good emotional intelligence will be able to rise above the emotions. And whenever a person is able to rise above any emotions, then he will be able to see the situations clearly and will be able to make a good judgments based on their mind or their brain, okay? So that's the reason why uh, a person needs to make decision when they are not emotional, okay? And um, the next one is a person who has good emotional intelligence will suffer less stress. The reason is that um, he or she knows that um, there are things that are happening around him. There are irritating people, uh, there are people who are very negative, and there are also situations which it is out of control for him. And he is aware of that. And this awareness helps him stay focused on the things uh, that are important at the moment and uh, staying focused on the things that is important to him. He'll be able to avoid the unnecessary conflict that is happening around him, okay? So this helps him to lower down the level of stress even though things are happening around him.
Okay. And the next one is um, if a person is able to resolve conflict in a healthy way, or if a person has a healthy relationship with other people and within himself, and if a person experiences less stress, and if he's able to make good decisions in life, and if he's able to manage his emotions well, overall, this person is going to be very happy. Okay, this happiness will lead a person uh, to be more productive in work and overall it will give a personal and a professional well-being to a person. So at the end of the day, what is the question? IQ is more important or EQ is more important? I would say we also need the brain, we also need the heart. The brain and the heart together will make a very successful person in life. Okay, so that's all I want to share about today. And thank you. If you have any questions, we will have uh, a discussion now. Okay. Okay, thank you, Ms. Ponhoi, uh, for sharing your thoughts on emotional intelligence. I'm sure that the students have learned a lot to this, to this session. Okay, so. Uh, we will, uh, should we have the activity or shall we go straight to the question now? I think we should go straight to the questioning. Uh, okay. yeah. Yeah, 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 we don't have much time. So, uh, students, uh, we have a QA session. So, please feel free to ask questions. Uh, you can unmute your mic, microphone, and ask questions. Or also, if you don't feel free, you can put your questions in a chat uh, box. Okay? So, please. Uh, this opportunity to hear all your thoughts. Yes, uh, okay, Miss, uh, we have one question. In the meantime, uh, there is other students also, you can put your questions in the uh, chat box or also please feel free to unmute your mic and ask questions, okay? Uh, yeah, this is a question from Abilio. Uh, she is from fourth semester. Her question is, I would like to know a little bit more about empathy and how it is different from sympathy. Okay. Yes, um, the thing is, um, a lot of time we sympathize with other people. For example, let's say a person uh, is going through a difficult time, okay? So let's say a person is suffering from COVID right now, okay? So sometimes we tend to sympathize with them. Uh, we will say that we're sorry we are going through the situation. But at the back of our mind, we feel that we are glad that we are not the one who is suffering from COVID-19, okay? But to empathize with somebody is when the person is suffering from COVID-19 and he must have been going through a lot of uh, things. Maybe emotionally or mentally, a person will be going through a lot of things. So to empathize with them, you really feel the same way, the same sadness or the same thing that the person is going through, which means you are walking in the shoe of that person and you really, really understand what that person is going through. That is empathy. So is it clear? Yeah, yeah, you have, uh, you have, you have, yes, Abino, it's clear, isn't it? Yeah, Mrs. Uh, clearly explained the difference between empathy and sympathy. Yes, is there any more questions? You can share your own personal, you know, thing which is affecting you, or maybe others. If you are going any negative emotions, you can please uh, take the time and ask. Yes, uh, students, please take this time. We have, uh, we still have more time. Ali, 
maybe yes. uh, it will be better if they do the activity also because uh, that activity also it's very helpful if they are not so interactive okay yeah we can do that to, we yes have look into themselves it will help them to look into themselves yes mm -hmm. so uh, it is more practical and it is very reflective so i think that will be more helpful okay yeah you can uh, go ahead with that yep yeah, students please don't leave the session okay don't worry uh can it will be helpful will it be okay, okay to show the slides uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, okay okay are you showing Yibyanga, can you show this slide about the case study? Okay, all right. Okay, just a minute. Okay. All right, uh, I hope it's visible now. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so I hope that this is visible to all of you. Okay, so what do you have to do in this case study is that um, this is a study based on emotional intelligence. So uh, if you, you have to look at the story out here, okay, you have to read through the story and in the end you have to analyze how each individual have behaved and if they possesses high emotional intelligence then how would the situation be different okay so that's what you're supposed to do so take your time maybe i'll give you around three minutes uh, to read through the story and then after that maybe i would want one or two people to share how would things be different okay so i i want one or two people to share their ideas on this So are you read, uh, reading out? Uh, no, I'm, just allow, I'm allowing okay. the students to read it by themselves. Uh, students, uh, I hope it's clear enough, size is big enough for you to view it. It's fine, that's fine. Okay, I'll give you one more minute.
Okay. Ali, were you able to complete the were you able to complete reading the story? Yes, yes. Okay, so which means uh, even the students would have been completed by now. So yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. So uh, I I want you to pick up uh, maybe one or two students like were a little bit interactive to share mm -hmm. some of the ideas that they have regarding this uh, case study. Okay. okay. Because uh, remember, when you're sharing it, there is no right or wrong answer, okay? So this is the situation, and you're, you're just supposed to look at the situation, and then if it were you, if it were you, how are you going to change the situation differently, okay? Okay, so I hope that students, you have all read the case study. Uh, you can, uh, you remember, you can uh, keep presenting. Right. Right, right. So, uh, yeah, I would like to request uh, any one of you to please uh, share what you have learned from this case study. Yeah, Shankoy, Shankoy, uh, Shankoy, uh, yes, miss. have you read this yes, uh, case study? Yes, miss. Can you please share your view? And then next, uh, Sentim Law, please share your view, okay? And then I would like to request uh, Billy No or Sayakri No to please share your view. And also Yakshi Kaba. Okay, so share your view, okay? And also others are more welcome. And I've been here also, yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. Am I audible? Yes, you're audible. Uh, according to me, if they had high, if they possess high emotional intelligence, uh, first of all, Radha, who, who was a brilliant student, okay, uh, possessing high IQ, but she posted for because of her father's post and so on things, and without knowing the reality, and uh, so such things like posting of her father's name and so on things and she she would have uh, she couldn't have done that with high emotional intelligence and on second portions uh, Ramya right so yes, even uh, even she uh, like if she had possess high level of EQ um, rather in, in place of being enemies or something being bad e or evil to Ramya or Radha uh, she could have advised her or like give her empathy or shown some kinds of sympathy and give motivations and so on things for her. So I think okay. if they possess su uh, such high level of emotional intelligence, they could have supported each other in place of uh, doing evil to each other. That's all. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. The next person who would like to share. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, am I audible? Yes, you're audible. Okay. So um, the first thing I noticed uh, here in this, in this case study is that uh, humbleness. They were all lacking in humbleness. That's the first thing that I did notice. Okay. So first of all, uh, Rata's father. Uh, Rata uh, was very proud of her father, but and. Her father itself used to narrate his own stories saying about his honesty and degrade. That means the father was also proud of himself. And he was talking about uh, himself, the greatness that he did, the goodness that uh, about his own goodness. But if his father was also humble and would have uh, taught Radha in that way, like even if, um, say, I don't know. <laughs> um, okay, okay, if, continue. Uh, okay. If he would have. Uh, told even though he was uh, a great person he became a great person if his father her father would have wrote, told Rata about being humble I think Rata would have done that even in the college she wouldn't have posted much about so his father was uh, well known by all the colleagues in the colleges uh, I think Rata uh, wouldn't have uh, posted a lot about his father as well and the uh, 
rather oh uh, yeah then oh. um, coming to her friend ramya uh, if she she had uh, had to possess a high emotional intelligence uh, she could have you know corrected rata of what she was of her behavior instead of you know being jealous and trying to put her down or trying to hurt her if she hadn't like the attitude or the behavior of rata and if she uh, she could have corrected her in a better way uh, not like uh, instead of trying to hurt or harm her okay okay mm -hmm. so thank you for sharing let's yeah. go to the next person who would like to share yes anyone from sixth semester yeah villano sacrino villano and sacrino or yakshikaba Uh, anyone like Anamdi, Renchumi, yeah, or Kuplen, Tetsuo, Abinio, Renchumi. Okay, yeah, Abinio will share. Uh, my point of view is what we see here in this case study is there is actually four characters. That is Radha, uh, his, her father, that. Uh, her friend Ramya and also one of his close friend. So uh, my point of view, like uh, agreeing with Shakoi and Jinjum Law, uh, it's true that Radha, I think she had a sense of, uh, I mean, her self-awareness emotion was more stronger than, uh, I mean, her social aw awareness emotion was more stronger than her self-awareness. Likewise, even her father as well. So, um, like the sense of proudness, it grows because one is more conscious about their social environment rather than uh, being low key, like the kind of self uh, awareness one would like to grow. So, uh, that is a negative point. I mean, like in that, that social thinking, uh, it was not good according to what I, uh, what I've studied. And also her friend, like, honestly, I prefer someone who there, when there is a competitor in anything because that uh, really helps someone to be more uh, idle thinking and someone to be more ambitious. So I appreciate the way her friend Ramya was uh, against Rata. However, um, not using her vocab properly, like, um, uh, how do I express it? Like not maintaining that social competition among others and by using negative words, that was that is uh, not a good emotional intelligence, a balance of emotional intelligence and IQ as well. And action speaks louder than words. So at the end, I, I would like to support her friend who slept Ramya, where uh, at the end, um, after having faced that embarrassment by Radha, it was actually better if someone took an action like uh, how we consider courts and police to control us when we are out of our um, when we are out of our control. So yeah, that's what I uh, that's what, that's my understanding from this case study. Thank you. Okay, thank you for sharing. Okay, so everyone has a different way of looking at things. Okay. So it's very uh, interesting to see uh, how the mind works and how you interpret the situations uh, in your understanding, okay? So do we still have anybody who would like to speak about uh, your interpretation of the situation here? Would anyone else like to share? Okay, so if uh, anybody doesn't have anything to share with this case study, then uh, this case study is supposed to be reflective, okay? So um, 
it doesn't have the right or the wrong answer. It is uh, dependent on how you see the scenario and how would you react according to the situation based on your emotional intelligence that you possessed. Okay, so uh, we will end the case, uh, case study out here. And if you still have questions, then we will go ahead with the questions. If not, then I will give the time uh, to Lily to go ahead with uh, whatever things that we need to do. Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you, Miss, for this very engaging session. Uh, I'm sure all the students have learned something from this and they will implement this in their life. So on behalf of the Tetsu College, on behalf of the Department of Economics and Tetsu College, thank you so much for taking up your time in this very busy, busy uh, times. Uh, you have taken up your time to come to speak to us on this very important uh, topic. So uh, we believe the knowledge uh, that you have shared with our students will help them to improve and develop emotional intelligence and they will be able to regulate their thoughts and lead a, lead a very good, uh, lead a very uh, positive life and their overall well-being will be improved. You know, almost uh, everything we do in today's world is dependent on our ability to manage our emotions. So I believe that through this case study and through your insightful message to the students, they will be able to know the same they will be able to know them, themselves better. So uh, we often see that uh, the pe some people, they are very successful, they have a high a IQ and they become very successful. They, at the end of their day, they, they are very stressed, they end up into some uh, addictive habits, they are very stressed, they are anger, they are not about English people. But there are some people who are live a very humble life, even though they don't have all the richness and all the wealth, wealth Workly pleasures, but they are living a very good and happy life. So, so I believe that it is how we regulate our thoughts because our thoughts leads our life. So we cannot control the external factors, like you say, but we can control the internal factors. And if we are aware of ourselves, we will be able to understand others and we will be able to regulate our emotions. So at times, like we are emotional beings, our emotions take control over us. So when our emotions take control of us, it brings, it's, it's, uh, we are not able to, you know, uh, think properly and we are overtaken by emotions and we don't believe and there are times when we do things which is uh, which we become very uh, upset and we think why we have done this but I believe that through this session we will all take something positive in us and from now onwards we will be able to regulate our emotions well and there's it's always you know we can always develop and improve our emotional intelligence to live a very good life. So with that note, I would like to thank all the participants and the guest speaker and my uh, department uh, colleagues, Sarah Devabata and Kim Younger, for the several questions. Or if you want to uh, ask more questions, you can always contact me so that I can help you to connect to my friend. Uh, OK, so there is one more question. Uh, it seems to be more engaging. So we have one more question. Can we know by Yashikawa, can we know ourselves if we're emotionally intelligent or not? So this is yeah. Okay. So uh, a lot of tests are available uh, online. Okay, so you can do a lot of tests um, because this tests are uh, meant for you to check yourself whether you're emotionally intelligent or not, okay? Uh, there are a few signs, uh, like I have spoken to you, if you're self-aware, if you're able to perceive emotions, if you're able to regulate your emotions in a healthy way, it is a sign, you will be knowing yourself. So it is a sign that you are emotionally intelligent. But if you still want a proof, then you can go ahead and do the test as well, okay? Are we clear? Yes, uh, yeah, we are. I hope, uh, yeah, Miss has made everyone clear. And yeah, if you have more questions, uh, you can ask. We still have uh, one minute, two minutes. 
Okay, uh, so if there is none, like, uh, yeah, everybody, especially, you know, youngsters, you teenagers, you all, you will not be able to understand your emotion properly. You will be facing a lot of stress, tension, you will be confused at this point of time. Um, and on top of that, now we are facing uncertainty. The world is, we are facing pandemic, and this, we are all affected by this pandemic in one way or other and then and then we have to shift from offline to online mode and then we're facing with a lot of uncertainty that people around are dying facing with a financial problem relationship problem so this emotional intelligence is very important so uh, i believe that you know my students have learned something from this uh, session and in future also if you want to ask any questions with regard to this uh, topic, you can please feel free to uh, contact me so that I can connect you to uh, Miss uh, Miss so that she can help you in personal level as well. So uh, thank you, uh, Miss, once again for this enga engaging and very insightful session. I myself have learned uh, a lot from uh, this session, and then being a teacher, even though you know, uh, being a teacher and being more. All then them still now where I'm facing difficult to regulate my emotions. We are still trying improving every day to regulate my emotions for my well-being. So thank you everyone, all the participants. And in future also we will be uh, like to have this kind of uh, session. Yes. Yeah, we have a guest here and she is a former teacher. Uh, oh, that's a college monoblue Louise is here. She wants to ask one question. Okay, so you can take the time. I hope we can still give time, but yeah. Yes, you can. Yeah, all right. Ahead. So, uh, yeah, me, thank you so much. And I thought of not, uh, you know, revealing my identity, but you have just, you know, <laughs> my name. So, yeah, that is fine. But yeah, I've also been attending the session. And uh, yeah, thank you so much, uh, Miss Chu, for sharing, you know, uh, about the uh, emotional intelligence in a very, you know, clear, you know, in a very clear and simple manner. You know, I've, uh, you know, learned so much from your presentation and you know the question that i would like to ask is that you know nowadays see uh, because of this current situation that we have been facing uh, most of us you, we go through a lot of uh, emotional struggles and all like uh, you know for example we go through many of us you know we are also struggling with anger you know fear and uh, anxiety or insecurity like that no so many uh, problem kind of problems so uh, what i would like to ask you is that uh, what what would be the best way no what what would be the best way or the right way uh, to deal with uh, such kind of problem if we're going through such kind of problem uh, would it be uh, uh, advisable to seek you know professional uh, those professional counselor if we're going uh, through such kind of uh, problem uh, is it you know advisable to seek professional help or uh, who would be the right person in this case if we're going through any kind of uh, you know emotional problems like that who would be the right person to approach you know uh, if we're facing such kind of problem so uh, i would like to ask the speaker to please share your views on this uh, yeah on this one yeah thank you okay uh, yes, uh, during this uh, uncertain times, it's not just during uncertain times, but um, uh, when we talk about anxiety, depression, uh, it has more to do with the mental issues. It, it's not just about feeling sad, okay? So uh, it is always nice to have somebody who understands you. So if we're supposed to go through something, then uh, it's always nice to have somebody to share, somebody who understands you. But if we're talking about uh, the depression and the anxiety and a uh, little bit more on the mental issue side, then it is always uh, the best advice uh, would be it is always good to seek the professional help. Okay, because um, at times, just being a friend, they are good enough to listen to us. Okay, but uh, with the help of the prof uh, professionals, you'll be able to. Uh, uh, learn how to navigate or you'll be able to learn how to come into uh, decisions what would be the best thing for you to do at the moment okay so uh, yes if you have anybody whom you can talk to talk to them do not always keep do not bottle up the feeling you have it's always nice to talk to somebody and then uh, once you share that with somebody you will see that half of your problems are gone 
Okay, and yes, the other thing would be, uh, if you think that this is very serious and if we have been going through this for more than uh, maybe a month, then it is very important for you to seek professional help as well. Okay, so yeah, that's the answer that I have. I hope I'm clear with whatever I'm saying. Thank you so much, uh, Miss, for for answering the queries. Again, like no, we still have one question. Okay, so uh, uh, should we take that question? Oh yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Take this yeah. This is for all. We have everyone. Everyone so we will take the question. Please feel free to ask. We have all the time. Uh, yes, Shan Koi, please go ahead and ask the question. Uh, hello, Miss. Okay, hello. Uh, your presentation is like, very helpful to me, and like I have one question to ask, and that is, uh, in this present scenario, uh, there are lots of people who are stubborn, and like I have a lot of friends of mine who are like willing to take their own decisions and not listening to others uh, who are giving them the right advice and all, not, uh, giving a sign of low EQ and something like that. So, okay. how do we? Uh, suggest some ways to correct them in a in their own way, like uh, something acceptable to them. How do we uh, correct them? In, uh, those kinds of suburban or some kinds of people who are who wishes to take their own decisions. Mm, okay, so uh, when we talk about uh, human beings, okay, like are so complex that sometimes it is very difficult to give uh, the appropriate answers to any type of questions, okay? Uh, but uh, what I would suggest is that your friend, okay, lacks emotional intelligence, but uh, the beginning of it, you can always start with uh, telling him the good things about him, okay? So that is the beginning of self-awareness. So maybe in his whole life, maybe that person did not uh, get any positive feedback, okay, or constructive feedback in his life. So uh, maybe he's not able to uh, listen from the other side or from the other's perspective, okay? So uh, what you can do is you can always tell the person, uh, start from uh, his good behavior or maybe start from his uh, positive strength. Okay, so once he is aware of himself, then slowly, slowly, you can start working on uh, the other areas as well. The reason being that person are who they really are because they really, really lack self-awareness. Okay, so to be self-aware is um, the answer for everything that we are going through. If we are really self-aware, then a person will be very reflective. A person will be able uh, to understand the situation even from the other's perspective as well. If you do not know the person, if you do not know yourself, then it is very difficult to know the other person and understand the other person. So what you can do is help him to be self-aware. Okay, so maybe you can start from giving him uh, the positive feedback, okay, about himself. So uh, that's what I would like to suggest. This is not a definite answer, but um, that's what I would do to my friend. Is that okay? Miss, one more question. Okay. So, um, how can we let a person know that we are not interested in them without actually telling them? Um, okay, uh, it is not uh, if the person is not emotionally intelligent, maybe the person will choose to ignore. Even if the person is emotionally intelligent, if he really likes you, he can do anything. Okay, so the best option for you is maybe if you really don't like the person and if you uh, are getting that vibes that you don't like it, you are supposed to use your social skills the number one important thing is communicate. So you're supposed to uh, communicate effectively to the person, which means that you're not going to blame the person. Why are you behaving like this towards me? But you're supposed to be assertive. In what way? You tell the other person that whatever uh, you are feeling and whatever he's doing is making you feel uncomfortable. 
Okay, so you're supposed to be assertive, telling the person what you really feel, and at the same time, you're not hurting the other person. So you're supposed to find a way how to communicate this to your friend. Okay, is that okay? Yes, please. Thank you so much. All right. Yeah, and I also believe that it's not wrong to like someone, isn't it? But, yeah. uh, and then we should not force other person to like us, also, like us. But when they like us, and then we should not uh, they respect their, uh, we should take care, we should respect their feelings also. And if we don't like them also, we should tell them in a very good way. We should give a positive uh, message, like that not uh, considering his feelings and, and communicate in a very proper way so that uh, it will radiate positive energy. Not that uh, you, both of you will become enemy, okay? So as you have stated, you want to maintain a friend, so you have to honestly communicate your feelings. You know, that I, I don't want to take this to another level. So I hope that if, if the person is emotionally intelligent and care for others, you will also respect the decision that you are making. Okay? Yeah, this is just the attention. All right. So, uh, yeah. Is there any other questions? So I'm sure like every one of us will be facing different problems and will not be uh, able to express this in this platform. But if you feel like, you know, you have, uh, you're going a lot of stress, tension, and you're not in a position to even share with this, your family members or with anyone, but you can always share with your elders or you, know, you can always contact a miss uh, to you, okay? So that uh, she can uh, guide you properly to understand the emotion and take better decision all right so if there is no other question like you know uh, this session was very engaging and i'm sure that all of you have learned uh, from this session and we will all try to take the positive from this session and uh, live a very good and positive life and have and we will be able to manage our emotions and and also we will be able to have a good interpersonal relationship with our uh, friends and the community Okay, so uh, stay happy and stay positive. With that note, uh, let's wind up our session. So once again, thank you so much, Miss, for your time. Okay, and I, you're welcome. Okay, so everybody uh, have a pleasant evening. Okay, okay. Thank you. Bye.